Okay, this is a quick demo of a modification I made to my Roland GR300 guitar synthesizer. Um, the biggest drawback of the GR300 is that it has only one waveform, which is this sound. Uh, kind of well, a well-known sound that uh, it makes, and that's the only thing you've got for oscillator waveform. So the modification, as you can see on the uh, on the oscilloscope, is pulse wave uh, as an option, and the pulse width is variable. And you can hear the pulse getting narrower and narrower. And since you now have variable pulse width you can automate that. Uh, let's put that on sine wave. So this is just a single oscillator from the GR300, not in the duet mode. And you can see the waveform being modulated there. So you have pulse width modulation now available in the GR300. And it's certainly a completely different sound than the than the uh, main GR300 wave. So it just broadens the palette a little bit, and then... Okay, so in order to control these new features on the GR300, I've built this little box. Um, and another thing I didn't like about the GR300 is that there's no LFO to the filter which seems like something simple they could have implemented that they didn't. Um, you do get it a little bit if you're using vibrato. You get LFO causing the vibrato and to the filter, but never filter alone. Uh, and so to expand the LFO options and to be able to pipe it to the filter, I built this box with a tap tempo chip from Electric Druid. And the tap tempo chip, the tap, tap tempo is here. Um, you have a divisor selector here, waveform select here, and then this shows you the, the, shows you the actual output of the LFO, whereas this is just the bass tempo. Um, on the top, we have the, uh, this is a manual knob for LFO speed. You can adjust it by tap or manually. Over here is the pulse width, and basically these coordinate with the switches. So this uh, button here switches between normal GR mode with the light off and pulse wave with it on and then the pulse width manually adjusts here. This is the pulse width modulation, how much pulse width modulation controlled by the switch and this is filter modulation here. So um, let's see. Um, sorry I adjusted the tuning a bit. Somewhere around there. So again, this is a um, single oscillator mode with pulse width modulation going on. Um, and then we can add filter modulation. And this is triangle, I think. I've got to label the box. Yeah, there's sine, triangle. That's a square wave LFO. Uh, Sawtooth. Which are pretty cool. I mean, if you um, really drop the filter and crank up the red, you can really kind of use it in a way where it's not detectably a guitar anymore because you've got no envelope information. You just hear the, the automated LFO sound, which is pretty cool. There's some resonance. So. That's again, this is filter all the way open, so you're just hearing the oscillators there. Or the single oscillator, it's not even in duet mode. And, with, and again, turning the modulation off. And just manually changing.
pretty wide range of new, you know, new sounds, the GR300. Uh, so all this was accomplished by basically building six servo circuits. Um, the GR already has a sampled wave, uh, it's kind of a voltage that it samples and it uses that voltage to control the oscillators. So the voltage that it's sampling is fairly steady and it, that voltage tells you, it's basically frequency information, but um, what I'm doing is comparing that voltage to a fixed voltage and then adjusting around the servo until that voltage gets changed to my fixed voltage. And then I apply that same um, reduction in the waveform size to the internal uh, sawtooth waves in the GR um, to get them down to a fixed height. So once you have a fixed height sawtooth wave across the, the whole string, it's it's trivial to create pulses from that. It's just standard synthesizer circuit after that. So the the real trick is leveling out those saws so that they're always the same fixed height. Um, so there's a circuit board inside. I'll show you a picture of that. And uh, I ended up using backtrawls because um, they're really one of the most linear ways to uh, perform the gain reduction because they don't uh, they don't have any voltage offset like some maybe a uh, OTA chip might have, and unlike a FET or a transistor, they don't um, they don't get modulated by the wave uh, the voltage across the device. So they stay really linear no matter what the uh, the voltage is across them. And in the end, that seemed to be the easiest way to accomplish it. So uh, yeah, that's it.